Hey guys, so for the past couple of days I've been experimenting with my um, seawater rise within Super Collider and while doing so I found that there was very little information available about that. I couldn't find a lot of resources for this so I wanted to make a tutorial about it. The two things that I did find were the, the first one um, was this seaboard API by the Roly guys themselves. Um, they have this repository and it has a Super Collider folder and if we go into there we just get a seaboard Super Collider project and uh, this one was interesting because it uses the NP voicer and what that sort of UGen does is it, it automatically handles the different voices because the problem with multi-polyphonic expression or the problem, I guess the good thing as well, is that we want a new synth to run on a new MIDI channel because um, if we play a new node on our Roly Seaboard, it's going to send a new channel which we can actually check if we use a MIDI monitor or something like that and we clear this, if I hit one note on my keyboard we can see that now it gets channel 3 and then if I hit a new one it goes to a different channel 2. So we need to be able to send a synth to use a synth for a specific channel because all the other messages are getting sent on that channel as well. So in other words if I hold two nodes, let's say one of the nodes has channel 2, the other one has channel 3, then if we apply more pressure to one of the nodes that will be sent to the same channel that that node is on. So we need to be able to sort of manage those channels carefully and this sort of NP voicer um, supposedly does that and, and handles uh, polyphony quite well. So I messed with this but I couldn't get it to work completely how I wanted it and another um, downside to this example is that it doesn't have the slide which is the, the up and down movement on a key and it also didn't have the pressure it only has a uh, glide and the note on and note off. So because of that I messed around there with a couple of, couple of hours and I didn't, I, I didn't really like the results I was getting, so I looked for something else and then I found this other MPE project which was actually made for the Linstrument, another MPE controller, I found that on the Linstrument um, forum. And this guy, this guy, uh, what he did is a much simpler method to sort of uh, manage this by first creating an array with the total number of channels and then he puts different MIDI um, functions which is just a, a MIDI handler UGen and he puts that on a specific channel by uh, passing the channel argument within the number of nodes and then creating the synths from there. So if that sounds a little bit vague that's all right um, it did for me as well but we're gonna look into that. So I'm gonna Go back to Super Collider and let's just run these um, pieces of code. In total, I, I will send a link to this project. It's only about like 80, 80 lines of code um, and it can, it can be simpler even. Um, but what I did here in this first block is I'm uh, creating a window and here, uh, in case you're unfamiliar with that, here you give the window size and then you give the dimensions, which is where it will open up on the screen. And I've I used a little bit of weird values so that it opens up in this bottom right corner of the screen. Then I, I put that on front so that it's always the top window. And I also make sure that it's always on top, which means that um, even if we switch windows, it's gonna stay on top. Then I give it a background color. Um, I open a stethoscope within that window by passing the view argument uh, W, which is uh, right there. And then I'm rebooting the server. And rebooting the server is a nice method to, um, if the server is not running, boot it. And if it's already running, reboot it. So let's run that. Um, and then we get our window there with the stethoscope. And then the next block of code, um, I'm connecting all my MIDI drivers. And as soon as I run that line, you will see the MIDI drivers sort of pop up in the, um, in the, post window and we can see that we have the IAC drivers um, and I have a network uh, session enabled. Um, I see my QNexus and finally my Seaboard controller. And then below that we have my synth which is just because I wanted to keep this example super simple so that you guys can get started with, with this. Uh, super simple synth dev. Um, I'm using a mod and a touch argument which are um, mod will be the um, will be the slide actually. Um, so that's the again the up and down movement on a key uh, and then touch is the pressure. 
Um, and then here I have an, a, just a simple envelope, um, just a simple ADSR with the done action. That's important because you want to free the synth as soon as it's done. And then um, we have a var saw UGen a variable saw wave, um, which we uh, use. The this is all just for the frequency argument. I'm lagging that to, to prevent clicks, and then I'm randomizing the frequency a tiny little bit. And then I'm duplicating that signal with this sort of sh uh, synthetic shortcut. And then the next, the next argument there for the var saw is the width. Uh, and I'm controlling that with the touch or with the with the pressure, and because of that, we can get cool sort of face width modulation sounds by applying more pressure. And then finally, I'm sending that signal into a low pass filter, which is being controlled by the mod, which was that slide movement, All right? And that goes to the output, and then um, it just stays on the server, which we can actually see if we press option command T, we can see the server window right here. All right, and then finally, th this is the area where it's about, or this is the block of code that's that's going to be the most important. So this method, as opposed to using the um, sort of NDEF module, we're actually creating an array here. So first we set the number of channels, which is going to be 16, and then the band range, 24. And then we're uh, connecting all the MIDI in buses. I think actually we don't need to do that because we already did that, so I can remove that one. Then we have our notes array, which is going to be past the number of channels. So that notes array, that's going to be an important one because this is the note, the note that you actually play and the note that you actually play should hold the synth. So that's why this gets the number of channels. And then finally we have our MIDI functions, which are, if you don't know them, if you go to the help document of this, we, we have a couple of different ones, like we have node on, node off, we have CC and we have some, some sort of pre-configured one configured ones like a uh, band and these are these are extremely handy so this first line here this is the important part because here we set these sins and then we pass the number of channels into that argument so that every sin that gets created um, will be put on that specific channel because at this point the sin actually gets created and then we can pass it the frequency and the amplitude all right a lot of talking i'll just run this and then we can see how it works um, so that runs, and now if I play a note, we should see that in the visualizer. So you can see that sliding up and down the key opens and closes the filter cutoff, and that's because here that mod argument is being passed to the filter frequency cutoff. So if we take a look at that mod MIDI function, it's just a CC, and it's CC74, and this is perhaps the most interesting because this one worked with CC numbers. So let's actually take a little bit of a closer look at that. The first thing you want to know is, all right, where does my after pressure or after touch or glide, where do those messages go? So for that, I'm using this uh, MIDI monitor. And then if I press a note and I sort of press down on it, we can see that that's a channel pressure message. So that doesn't have a specific CC, it's more of a type. But then if I slide up and down, um, that is being me, that's a control message and it's MIDI CC74. So that's what I'm, I'm using here. So basically it says if the synth on this channel is different from nothing, so in other words, if there is a synth on this channel, then set the mod and then again, it gets the channel argument right uh, there. Um, set, set the mod value on the synth on that channel and then here we just pass the values. So here you have your mod argument and then we're we're scaling that range. So the input input range is always 0 to 127 because it's just regular MIDI messages. And I'm scaling that between 0 0.001 and 1 1.0. So this is actually you can mess around with this. I'm by no means a super collider expert. So there might be like better values for this. But that is how the slide movement gets passed into the mod argument and then gets passed into the synth that is currently playing um, for MIDI CC 74. So here we can see the arguments of that. So we have the function itself, which is basically the whole block of code, and then we have the CC number, and then we could specify a channel, but we've already done that. All right, so let's, let's try and play this again. So 
that's our filter cutoff. And then we have our pressure, um, and the pressure is going to the touch argument, and there I'm uh, multiplying the value by 1.0 divided by 127. I sort of used a different method there, so you can see how both work. So this, this ends up with a similar situation where you get a number between one and zero from those 127 values. I actually like this better, but it might be more complicated to understand. It, it's for me at least. So that's the that's for the touch, and you can see here that this is not a MIDI funk.cc. Like this MIDI funk.cc, we use that to with specific CC numbers, like in this case 74. But this one, because it's not a specific CC number, but it's just a after touch sort of value, I'm using the uh, MIDI funk.touch, which you can find in the help documents, and you can see some specific arguments for that. So this looks a little bit different, although not not that much. So with the touch, what I what I did there is if we go back to the synthf, I'm setting the width to 1.0 and then I subtract the touch value from that. But let's let's hear what that sounds like actually. <laughs> See that circle gets bigger if I use more after after pressure. And to show you that this is truly polyphonic, we can play two notes and then um, give different pressure for each 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 of the notes. can hear that there the low notes stay sort of consistent while the while I'm changing the after touch and the high note. So I hope that's going to get you started. If you have any questions about this, which um, would be quite understandable, um, you can you can always contact me about that. I will put links in the description to all the different things we looked at. So both the two examples sort of code, codes that I used and um, my own project. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in a next video.